Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we are here at the South Park Center and I'm here with Erin Doyle Cooper with her movie Believe Her. Let's take a look at a clip. Nice place. Oh, thanks. The bathroom is uh, just like over there. Aaron, thank you so much for being here today. No, oh, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for bringing this very, very important film. Um, but for those that haven't seen Believe It, tell us a brief synopsis. Yeah, so um, Believe Her is about what happens when a woman tries to report sexual assault. Um, it's a 13-minute short film that traces a survivor's experience from uh, the moment that she's attacked her through her decision not to file a report. Mm -hmm. um, and we see that in spite of the fact that she was very clearly raped. There are a lot of incidents, uh, things that lead the cops, her friends, her family to question her story and ultimately force her to, dis to decide to just put a lid on it and yeah. suffer in silence. Erin, uh, your film was definitely one of the most important films I think I've ever seen at New Filmmakers Los Angeles. Um, I mean it was you know wonderfully you know acted and directed but the message of the story and what this person goes through felt so realistic to maybe mm -hmm. what many women suffer yeah. um, in the fight against something that's happened that's so awful um, that they're not believed. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really want to say this question <laughs> because I'm, it's quite obvious in some respects. But where did the inspiration come from? You and say, right, I want to make this project. Yeah. So, um, so a, a few things. Uh, first, <laughs> I had a. I had just left a full-time advertising job um, mm -hmm. to focus on directing and really. Uh, pursue what it what it really is that I wanted to do with my career and um, I was planning on making a comedy that's my background I met my husband at the UCB um, I did improv for years mm -hmm. and uh, and so I thought that's what I was gonna do and then um, a few things happened the first the Brock Turner ruling came in uh, and I was angry like a lot of women <laughs> at the time uh, and then the uh, there was a scandal in the comedy community um, uh, with a, a teacher and it led to a lot of women starting to share their stories. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, I, I'd also been going through some, some things in my life and I just decided that instead of, you know, that I could, that I could make a comedy anytime, but mm -hmm. that it was gonna be really important to say something with my art. And mm -hmm. so um, that's what initially inspired me to make Believe Her. Um, it is based on true stories from um, friends of mm -hmm. mine, mm -hmm. uh, people that I know um, and you know, I took certain details, and I think a lot of the most horrifying details in the film are are true and, and real. And then, uh, then also did a lot of research, reading reports about police treatment of victims, and kind of filled in some gaps there. Mm -hmm. um, really looked into what are the questions that um, when a, when a woman tries to report, what what is she asked. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, a lot of the things in the film are pretty tame <laughs> compared to even yeah. sometimes what happens, but I, I wanted to create a universality that, that a lot of, that people could, could see themselves in, and, and really yeah. the idea was to create empathy for women and give women a voice. Yeah. Um, this was also well before Me Too. Um, so I actually, I, I wrote the script, I was, <laughs> I sat on it then for probably about nine months. Um, I was, uh, I think afraid um, to make it. I didn't think anybody was going to want to see it, and uh, I just I. It took me some time to overcome that, and then actually the impetus. I was uh, I was in Nashville. I was taking a writing sabbatical. My husband and I were doing a two month road trip, and um, the first Bill Cosby decision came in when he got acquitted, and I. <laughs> I think I screamed an expletive. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm making the movie. It's like I'm doing it, and. Uh, and things moved really quickly. Um, and then the Weinstein story broke two weeks before we started filming. Oh my uh, goodness. We were like a couple days out from finishing our fundraising campaign and um, that happened. And so that was just, it was wild shooting. Uh, it was October, 2017. We shot in Brooklyn. Um, 
with an all-female crew, which is another whole thing to talk about. But um, yeah, it, it was it was wild, and I think um, it, it it was amazing to be lifted up by so many other women as all of these reports were coming out and, and women were finally feeling women and men because this is not just a this yeah. is not just a, a women's issue um were coming forward and and sharing their stories and it, yeah. it was just incredible timing and i think also gave me a lot of courage as a filmmaker to to put this out there i mean it, it, there's there's no better time sadly it's come to this automation of a point where we're now only really acknowledging what mm -hmm. people are really going through which is a real sad fact anyway yeah. but i think the way that you know you just felt that her character it's many many people real people mm -hmm. human people around the world that are going through this experience yeah. and i think it was so beautifully you know executed um your cast will just yeah <laughs> i mean firstly it's very difficult to have someone to take on a role like that to, yes. to, to, to lead a role that and 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 because it's very emotional mm -hmm. and probably also very emotional for the for the guy to have to take on a role Absolutely. that as well because i'm you know yeah this is very difficult so how was that <laughs> process for you yeah um well, so first of all i i mean alison tolman is just hmm. one of the most incredibly talented working so actors. good it just that that we have as <laughs> um and she was i mean just she spoiled me. She ruined me for the rest of my life because she not only was she just such an incredible talent, but just such a lovely person on set. And I think this uh, this could have been just an excruciating shoot, um, but she and uh, and uh, uh, Ryan Welsh, who, who played mm -hmm. the rapist, um, they they really had such a great rapport and yeah. um, were able to like joke in between takes. We actually shot the assault first because I wanted them to be able to have that to. Um, draw on yeah, for yeah. the rest of the film, but then also just like, let's get the worst thing out of the way yeah. and then we can you know, deal with the rest of it. Yeah. Um, so they, they had a great rapport. There was so much trust. Um, and we talked a lot as well, even after about having only women on the crew, mm -hmm. it was shooting the assault. It was need to be there only. So it was just a few women in the room, um, even monitors like nobody who didn't have to see the monitor was, oh, was looking I love at that. it so it was a very safe environment yeah. for them um to be able to to go to that that really dark place yeah. and um you know i don't want to <laughs> say it was a positive experience because it's no it's but an excruciating I, I, I know thing, exactly but, what you're trying to do and that's yeah. i'm so glad you did that it's yeah. amazing for you to do that and really recognize how important that is yeah um i, I mean i thought about i i you know i i, I and I'm an actor as well. Yeah, um, so I you, haven't done it in a long time, but I no. thought about if I if I had to do this, what is the experience that I would want built yeah. for me to be able to to be this vulnerable? And, and that's, yeah. that's what I tried to create. Oh. Um, and to your point too, with um, with Ryan, he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, yeah. I mean, he's truly like he is a uh, he's one of my best friends' husbands, mm -hmm. um, and he's a great dad. And and I, you know, I, I think he struggled too with like how you know, who, who would do this? Who would think this is okay? Right, and right. so he had to do a lot of work. Um, I think everybody on this film um, had to do a lot of work um, as to how could anybody respond this way to somebody who has so clearly, um, so clearly been assaulted. Like even yeah. the, the cops, Hillary Walker, yeah, I the mean, female oof. cop. She was like, I don't know. She, she did a ride along with a, with a New York City female policeman to talk about police woman to talk about um, what is it like to, to get this call and to meet these women in distress and where does that doubt come from for you? And um, Now everybody played it completely, everyone had such a, even, and her friend as well, even her reaction to what she'd went through mm -hmm. um, was also just amazingly mm -hmm. powerful as well. Um, I mean, I, I personally think that it's always amazing when you can make a film that not only is, you know, for our to be entertained, but also to educate and to kind of relate and yeah. to understand what is going on in the world. Um, so congratulations on that and making yeah. a safe set environment. Um, what was the biggest challenge you faced? I mean, I'm sure there was challenges and Ooh. was there any technical challenges um, that, that were kind of easy? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll tell a story about illegal filmmaking. Yeah, uh, there we go. Because I love to hear, I'm like such a rule follower. So um, we had a real, <laughs> Uh, so for our the the last thing we shot is the date scene when mm -hmm. um, when they uh, 
but before things go south, yeah. it's a good date. You know, it's a sweet, chaste goodnight kiss, and mm -hmm. he weasels his way inside. Um, and we had been planning to shoot um, out front of the uh, the location, the, the apartment that we shot in. And last minute, um, <laughs> we were told that we couldn't shoot outside. And so the crew was like running and scouting other places on the block. Um, we had like. 15 minutes left. Allison's oh, hair no. was wet. <laughs> like, oh no. So like the uh, we were doing like a really quick dry of like just the top layer of her hair like trying to figure out like okay we, we can't be too far away like somebody carried a light. Mm. We had PAs like guarding so oh, that like goodness. homeless this like homeless guy kept like trying to walk through the shot and like oh, yelling no. at us. And it was just like it was one of those moments where I was like you know what I hired all of these incredibly uh, incredibly talented people. I just have to trust them. Yes. Uh, I couldn't take my monitor with me because we were out of range. I was oh, like no. looking over the shoulder and it was just like, it all my DP who did a beautiful job and uh, and Megan, who was the steady cam operator, also just incredible. I was just like, okay, ladies, <laughs> like this is what I want, go. Um, and I think we did it three times, like really quickly. And um, I'm glad you did it. It was just, yeah. And, and it was so, I, I think it was a relief for them a little bit yeah, to get yeah. to do this, like, and they had so much chemistry. Um, but it was one of those really intense moments of like, we have to get this now or we don't have to. So now scene. or never, yeah, yeah no, and, definitely. Uh, oh, and well, it's one of my favorite scenes. Yeah, I know, it's a great <laughs> scene. I can imagine it without yeah. it. Um, uh, what was what's it like then? Because obviously, you know, you're seeing it on the monitor, you're seeing it on your laptop, you're seeing yeah. it amongst in the editing room, amongst friends. Yeah. What's it like then to have you, this experience on the big screen yeah. with an audience at New Filmmakers LA? What was that uh, experience like for you? Um, I mean, it's it's so it it's so surreal to see your work on the big screen, mm -hmm. and I I hope I never um, lose that wonder. Mm. Um, I think. It's amazing. It's also incredibly stressful. Like I'm every time I show it, I'm like super chill until mm -hmm. like I just lose my mind a few minutes <laughs> before. Like I, um, I don't know. I guess you're supposed to be like, oh yeah, like yeah, that's I'm so chill. But like no, I am I, not chill. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, I don't think I would I don't be think either. Everybody is. It's so yeah. hard to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, and it's like you're kind of like watching the audience as much <laughs> as, you're, <laughs> as you're watching the film. Um, but. I, I mean, yeah, it's sur it's the dream, right? Like it's that's, the dream you're that's doing, the, yeah. As much as um, you know, I, I think you know, streaming platforms and um, are doing so much for independent mm -hmm. filmmaking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the number of amazing films that, that Netflix has has made possible. Oh, it's astounding. Um, yeah. But there is something really special about seeing it on the oh, big screen. There really and is. So I mean, it's yeah. I'm I'm so grateful to be given the opportunity, and it it was. I mean. We're grateful yeah. to have you, and so, so are our audience, and just how important your film is for society and for everyone to watch. Um, you know, whether you're a film lover or not, this is an important yeah. film to watch about, you know, changes that need to be made in this current climate and world that we've lived in for many, many years, and now only suddenly we've started to listen to, and we need to just keep listening yeah. um, to people. So thank you for that. Um, what's next for you? <laughs> uh, so I have two, uh, two, so the, the next short that I'm working on, um, I wrote because I want to blow up a car. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's it was on the bucket different. list of it's like, yeah, list. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a comedy. I'm going to make that comedy. Love um, it. I love a, it. Kind of a dark comedy. Um, and yeah, I was, I was talking to my friend who produced Believe Her and we were like, you know, what do we really want to do? And, um, you know, I think I love, I love action. I love, um, genre and I think you know especially as, as a female no one's just going to be mm. like oh here's like here's an action film um I so I was that. like I want to do like I have to make what I want to do yeah that I can do it and so um I'm finalizing that script and starting to look for funding um and then the other and it, it's a I, I love music as well that's my other yeah. great passion so um I have a lot of a lot of scripts about musicians. So this yeah. is about a grunge band in 1994. Oh, awesome. Um, so yeah, so it should be a lot of fun. And oh. then uh, I'm also working on a Western because that's my other dream is to make a, a female driven Western. So I've been working on the feature for that and may end up doing, taking an excerpt and making a short. Um, so those are kind of the, the two projects I'm working on right now. Oh, I love it. I love you just doing all the things you want to do and the yeah. types of things that you want to do as well. It's the only way that no one's going to give it to you, so. No, gotta... I mean, I, honestly, I'd, I'd say I was going to, usually one thing I ask is, you know, do, do you have any piece of advice? But I think you already 
sharing, <laughs> hey, just go and do it, yeah. you know? And you're, you're making it happen. It's yeah. so And I love your work, and I just oh, can't you. wait to see, see much more of it. But, but thank you for giving us um, Believer. And it really is a film that you have to watch um, because, you know, you are... It's, it's, you know, it changes society and, and everything of how we see and, and what we do need to improve uh, in this world that we live in as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron, everybody.